Hello and welcome to the Application Guide for Optional Practical Training, presented by LaSalle College's Office of International Services. This presentation will assist you in applying for optional practical training, better known as OPT. In this presentation, we will discuss the OPT application process, the timeline for applying, selecting employment dates, the OPT checklist, detailed instructions for completing forms, how to receive your OPT recommendation I-20, and submitting your OPT application to USCIS. As mentioned in the OPT Basics tutorial, the OPT application process is a two-step process. First, F1 students who are eligible to apply for pre-completion or post-completion OPT must obtain a new I-20 with OPT recommendation. In order to receive this I-20, you must collect all application materials listed on the OPT checklist and make an appointment with an advisor at the OIS. After you receive your OPT I-20, the second step is to mail all OPT application materials to USCIS. It is important that they receive the OPT application within 30 days of the issue date on the I-20. USCIS can take up to 90 days to approve OPT, so it is important to apply as early as possible. For pre-completion OPT, you are eligible to apply 90 days before your proposed start date of employment. For post-completion OPT, you are eligible to apply 90 days before your program completion date until 60 days after your program completion date, which is the end date on your I-20. It is not possible to expedite OPD processing and you should not contact USCIS. To apply for OPT, you need the following items. The LaSalle OPT recommendation form, a completed form G1145, a completed and signed form I-765, photocopies of page one and the travel signature page of all previously issued I-20s, including those from other schools, a printout of the electronic I-94 record, a photocopy of the passport biographical pages, a photocopy of the F-1 visa stamp and all previous U.S. visas, except for Canadian citizens, a check or money order for $380 made payable to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security, two color U.S. passport sized photos, a photocopy of the front and back of previous EAD cards or change of status approval notices, if applicable. Finally, an optional cover letter. A sample letter can be found on the employment page of the Office of International Services website. Please note that this letter will be required if you cannot locate documents such as previous I-20s, EAD cards, or change of status approval notices. All of these items can be found on the OPT application checklist, and we will now go into more detail about these forms. The first item is the LaSalle OPT recommendation form. This form is needed in order to tell the advisors at the LaSalle OIS the OPT dates you have chosen. Please download the form from the OIS website, complete, and print the form. On the form, you will indicate the dates you request employment authorization. When selecting dates for pre-completion OPT, you may choose any dates you wish to start and end your employment. You may work part-time for up to 20 hours per week while school is in session and more than 20 hours per week during the summer or official school breaks. For post-completion OPT, you may request a start date that is any day between the day after your program completion date and 60 days after that date. For example, if your program end date is May 18th, 
The earliest possible date you may request to start employment is May 19th, and the latest possible date is July 17th. When selecting a start date, you should consider the time that your application is submitted. Remember that it takes USCIS up to 90 days to approve OPT and send your EAD card. You cannot start working until you receive your EAD card. It is also important to note that you may not accrue more than 90 days of unemployment during the 12 months you are on OPT. If you do not report a job within 90 days of the start date of your OPT, your OPT and F1 status will end and you must leave the United States immediately. The end date of your OPT should be 12 months from the requested start date if you have not used OPT during your program. So for example, if you choose an employment start date of May 19, 2015, your end date should be May 18, 2016. Remember, you cannot change your OPT dates once you have submitted your application. The next document you need to complete is Form G-1145, the e-notification of application petition acceptance. This form allows you to receive an email or text message notification with your receipt number for your case when your application is received by USCIS. You can follow the link to the form from the OPT checklist. Download and complete the form, then print it. Next, you will complete Form I-765. USCIS Application for Employment Authorization. You should follow the link to the form from the OPT checklist. Download and complete the form, then print. Your signature is required on the application. Do not provide an electronic signature. You should sign and date the application in blue ink after you've completed and printed the form. Many students have questions regarding the I-765, so in this tutorial, we will address common questions. If you have never applied for a work authorization document, EAD card, from USCIS, please check the box, Permission to Accept Employment. If you have applied for OPT in the past, please check the box, Renewal of My Permission to Accept Employment and complete section 11 on the form. Please write your name as it appears on your passport. In the address section, be sure you write a valid U.S. mailing address on line 3. Make sure you use an address that will be valid for at least 3 to 5 months in the future. If you use your address, your full name should be printed on the mailbox. If you plan to move out of your current home or residence hall in less than three months, consider using the address of a reliable friend or the Office of International Services who can receive the EAD for you. EADs are considered government documents and cannot be forwarded by the U.S. Postal Service. If you use the address of a friend or the Office of International Services, the first line of your address in item 3 should read CO, which stands for Care Of, followed by the name of your friend or an advisor at the Office of International Services. Then you can list the street number and name. If you do not use your own address, you should submit a cover letter. A sample cover letter can be found on the OIS website. In Section 10, you will enter your 11-digit I-94 number, which can be obtained by following the link provided. You will need to use your I-94 printout again to answer questions 12, 13, and 14. Date of last entry, place of last entry, and current status are all located there. In Section 15, you should write F1 student. 
Then, in section 16, please enter the following codes. For pre-completion OPT, enter C3A. For post-completion OPT, enter C3B. Please sign and date the form using blue ink. Give the telephone number where you can be reached if the USCIS has questions about your application. Next, you will need to print your electronic I-94 record by following the link. Print this page. You should be in F1 status with the admission until DS. If your most recent entry to the U.S. was by land, you will have a white paper I-94 card in your passport. If this is the case, please provide a copy of the front and back of this card instead of the electronic I-94 printout. You will need to provide a money order or check for $380 made payable to the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. You can obtain a money order from the post office or a bank check from your bank. Remember to sign the front of the check. You may also provide a personal check, but it is not recommended. If you choose to provide a personal check, be sure to use a check that has your name and address in the upper left corner. A check must be associated with a U.S. bank account that has sufficient funds in the account. Insufficient funds or funds drawn from a foreign account will cause a rejection of the application. You will need to provide two official U.S. passport sized color photos. Make sure they are the correct size. You must write your name, CVIS ID number, and I-94 number on the back of both photos gently in pencil. Do not staple the photos to the application. Place the photos in a small envelope and use a paper clip to attach it to the application. The additional documents you will need to apply for OPT are a copy of the identification pages of your passport, a copy of your F-1 visa and all previously issued U.S. visas, except for Canadian citizens a copy of the first page and travel signature page of all I-20s ever issued, including from other schools. If you cannot locate them, you must write a short letter stating that you cannot locate them and the dates that you were at those schools. Make sure all of the I-20s are signed. A copy of all previously issued EAD cards, if applicable. If you cannot locate them, please write a letter stating that you cannot locate them and provide approximate dates of your previous OPT. A copy of change of status approval notice, if applicable. Once you have collected all of the OPT application materials, your first step is to receive an OPT recommendation I-20 from LaSalle's Office of International Services. To do so, you should make an appointment with an advisor at the OIS, bring the originals and one photocopy of all documents to the appointment. A cover letter is optional, but it is required if you cannot locate documentation such as an I-20, previous visa, or EAD card. At the appointment, an advisor will review your application and you will be issued a new I-20 with OPT recommendation and given further instructions for submitting your application to USCIS. After you receive your OPT recommendation I-20, your next step is to mail the application to USCIS. Please watch the OPT tutorial, Mailing Application to USCIS, that is available on the Office of International Services website for more instructions on completing this step. Thank you for your attention and good luck.